Hey, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about part five to our medication series. We're going to be talking about controlled substances. We'll be talking about generic names, um, top 200 drugs, NTI drugs, control schedules two, which a lot of you all are um, kind of needing help with. And then I have some frequently asked questions that I want to talk about that people have left in my inboxes. So let's hop into it, get you a paper, a pen, and let's get started. Okay. So NTIs, we're getting, we're starting very quickly. NTIs, the narrow therapeutic index, uh, is in NTI, right? That's the abbreviations. And it says, which of the following medications has a has a narrow therapeutic index? Um, what I want you to know about NTIs is these are medications that should patients should be using and they should be getting blood work done when they are using these medications. They are very serious drugs. And um, this particular NTI drug is levothyroxine. And if you realize, or if you see, I did underline thyroid and levothyroxine because I want you to know that it's used to treat thyroid and that it is also an NTI drug. Um, you will also see that I underlined statin. I didn't do that uh, because this is an NTI drug. Statin is not an NTI drug. Statin is a high cholesterol drug, but I wanted you to see the word stem there. So there is a suffix um, statin, S-T-A-T-I-N, and that just lets you know that that word stem is always used for cholesterol. I just wanted to throw that in there just because it was a part of the answer choices. Um, but the answer for this one is levothyroxine. And it says um, that which of the following medications has a narrow therapeutic index? That answer is levothyroxine. And one of the things that you should remember about levothyroxine is that it's best if it's taken on an empty stomach first thing in the morning, okay? Schedule two, schedule two, which of the following is an opioid? Now, schedule two does not allow refills. No refills for schedule two whatsoever, okay? There are no refills for schedule two drugs, write that down. Um, in this particular Schedule II, we are looking at letter C as our answer. Schedule II drugs are kept in the lock cabinet. Remember that, write that down. And um, there are no refills whatsoever, okay? If you have not subscribed to this channel, baby, what you waiting on, okay? You here every week. Why you ain't subscribed? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications, friend. Um, anticoagulant. So anticoagulants is anything that is that stops the uh, coagulation of um, the blood, right? That means that it's stopping the blood from forming blood clots. Blood clots, we know, can be very harmful and uh, detrimental. So um, typically people take anticoagulants, blood thinners, to thin the blood. Um, but this question says, what? which one of these anticoagulants interact with oral hypoglycemic agents. Now, all of these are not anti anticoagulants, but it did say uh, which what drug interacts with a oral hypoglycemic agent. Oral, excuse me, oral hypoglycemic agent. So one of the things you want to remember, um, I did highlight hypo. Hypo means low and gly means uh, sugar. So when we're thinking about gly, that's going to be diabetes, okay? So now we have some hints here. Also, you know we've been underlining keywords, okay? Throughout this entire series, we've been working on keywords and underlining these keywords, right? Because if you can underline keywords, you could possibly get the correct answer because you're going to be thinking like the author of the test. So it says anticoagulants interact. Well, let me... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Anticoagulants interact with oral hypoglycemic agents, okay? Now, um, now that we know that we're talking about an, a drug by mouth, which is oral, we're talking a drug that had, that treats low sugar, right? Um, what drug that treats low sugar is interacting with a anticoagulant? Um, and so now we're going to look at warfarin. Our answer is letter D, warfarin. Warfarin interacts with hypoglycemic agents. Warfarin is a blood thinner and is interacting with diabetes drugs, okay? Warfarin is the blood thinner and it interacts with diabetes drugs. 
okay? Um, oral hypoglycemic to be exact, okay? Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Make sure you are writing that down. Okay, here we are. This is a frequently asked question that I get all the time. Am I eligible for the PTCE exam? Okay, in order to be eligible for the PTCE exam, which is given by the PTCB, you need to have one of two things. You either need to have completed a PTCB recognized education training program, or you should have at least 500 hours of experience as a pharmacy technician. You need one or the other. Our four week review class starts a new class every first Monday of the month. And we are PTCB recognized, which is the first option. So if you are interested in becoming certified so you can take that board exam, give us a call. Because what you don't have to do is go and work 500 hours in the pharmacy. I think that if you were working 500 hours in a pharmacy, that could possibly take six months, um, seven to eight months even a year to get 500 hours, depending on how many hours you are working. But our course is four weeks only, okay? So if you are interested in getting that uh, education technician training program completion, please give us a call. I have the number at the bottom of the screen and that will satisfy that first option that will make you eligible to take the pharmacy technician certification exam. Some of you all are here, but you have not completed e either of the options. And so you won't be qualified to take the test. I know someone who took the test, did not have either of the options completed, actually passed the test because she was watching my channel but didn't have any of those um, education requirements completed. And so she had 30 days to, I don't know, 60 days, excuse me, to complete a pharmacy technician program or to gain those 500 hours in order for the test to be valid. Because you remember when you get that, um, you may not have seen it, but there is a, a preliminary result that is printed out after you pass the test. And there is 60 days on there where it says this is preliminary and it can be um, basically what they're doing during that time is they're checking out to make sure you've completed all of the necessary requirements to be certified through the PTCB. OK, so if you have not gotten your ducks in a row, give us a call 903-295-5933 and we can help you gain certification for the completion of the training class along with becoming a certified technician through the PTCB. OK, I'm dropping this here. I've had so many people ask me about this. And so I wanted to give you that information back to the content. Topical dosage form. Now, the topical dosage form here is going to be used to treat psoriasis. Psoriasis. That is a condition of the skin. And it says which of the medication is indicated for the treatment of psoriasis. The answer is C. If you guess C, you got that correct. Topical dosage form is always applied to the skin. So when you're typing this up, in the pharmacy, you're going to say apply to skin, and then you will follow the directions that are listed by the doctor. <clears throat> Diabetes. Which of the following generic name for glucovance? Which of the following is the generic name for glucovance? If you notice, I underlined or highlighted generic, and then I also highlighted and underlined gluco because gluco triggers my mind to know we're talking about sugar. We're talking about sugar here. Right. And then if you notice, I took the liberty of going through all of the um, I took the liberty of going through all of the answer choices. I highlighted the lie all the way through G-L-I, G-L-Y, G-L-I, G-L-I. You see that in all of the answer choices. Now, here's the thing that you want to remember that the G-L-I can be at the beginning or the middle. But when you see GLI or GLY, you're going to remember glucose, sugar, diabetes, okay? 
Now, there are two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes treats, uh, insulin treats type 1 diabetes, okay? Insulin treats type 1 diabetes. Diabetes type 2, pill form. <clears throat> pill form, okay? That is the most common treatment for diabetes type 2. Diabetes type 1, most common treatment, insulin, okay? Because there are two types and you need to know these things. The correct answer here is letter B, B as in boy. Generic name, it says, which of the following gen is the generic name for Seroquel, okay? One of the things I want you to remember about Ser Seroquel is that it, it can cause drowsiness, and if someone is drowsy, it may impair their ability to drive, okay? What are the side effects of Seroquel? Drowsiness may impair the ability to drive, okay? So we don't want them driving while they're taking Seroquel because it does make them feel drowsy, sleepy, that sort of thing, okay? Um, the correct answer is letter D. And I wanted to highlight the first few letters of it because when I look at letter D, that is the generic, and it makes me think about quiet. For whatever reason, I think about quiet. And whenever I'm sleepy, I'm quiet. Because, baby, I'm ready to take, look, ready to lay this head down, okay, and take a nap. And so whenever I think about um, this one, I can automatically assume or put together that this is Seroquel. It causes drowsiness. It may impair the ability to drive. And this, this drug goes along with it because when you're sleepy, you're drowsy, you're quiet because you're nodding off, right? So the correct answer here is letter D. The next one is talking about drug classification. Remember, medications is 40% of your exam. I had someone say, why are we just doing medications? Because it's 40% of your exam. Because it's 40% of your exam. And so if you're not familiar with drug classes and side effects and things of that nature, when you see that board exam, it could be very difficult for you to pass it. A lot of people think that they need to focus on math and drug laws. No, ma'am. No, sir. This is 40% of your, of your test is me medications, medications, okay? So drug class, um, it says, which of the following drug class is indicated for depression? Depression. I want you to know that selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, letter C, is used to treat depression, also known as SSRIs. And I gave you an example of an SSRI, which is Zoloft. Write that down. Zoloft and then SSRIs. You can also write out the entire um, name there. And then remember that that is a drug class. That is a drug class for depression. When we're talking about non-controlled drugs, I think in the past I've talked about all ADD and ADHD drugs are typically controlled substance too. This is the one. Um, this is the one time that there is a non-controlled drug that is used to treat ADHD. I believe this is the only drug that is non-controlled that treats ADHD. Okay, and so you want to write this down. I have the generic name in the uh, parentheses, and then I have the brand name Stratera, which is right here next to it. The generic is here. Okay, it says it may be taken with or without food. Okay, all right. And when they get ready to get off of this, they have to be tapered down, okay? So your correct answer is letter A, A as in apple. This one here is gonna talk about erectile dysfunction, okay? It says the generic name for Cialis. Cialis is used to treat erectile dysfunction and if you notice, all of the drugs I have highlighted that ends in AFIL, they're all used to treat erectile dysfunction. And I highlighted that because I wanted you all to see that, again, these drugs have something in common, okay? All three of them are not the correct answer. Letter C is the correct answer, but you know that A, C, and D are all used to treat erectile dysfunction. And the brand name for letter C is Cialis, okay? 
Let's look at side effects of an OTC drug. So most people have heartburn or, you know, sometimes they may have heartburn or acid reflux and they go to the pharmacy and they want something over the counter. OK, one of the side effects of aluminum hydro hydroxide is constipation, letter A, constipation. OK, Mylanta is one of the drugs that are used to treat heartburn and it can cause constipation, okay? It can cause constipation, write that down. That is something that you want to see and something that you do want to remember. One of the things I like to tell people is um, these digestive issues when you're taking, when people are taking medication, because it does, you know, it can affect the digestive system. Sometimes it might either constipate them or give them diarrhea make them nauseous or cause vomiting, right? So we've seen that digestive, the digestive is pretty much a common side effect. And for this particular question, the letter A is the correct answer, constipation, okay? Here we are, we're at the end. Now, this is another thing that you all have asked me for, so I wanted to include that in today's session. Where can I order the review book? People are always asking me about the book that I recommend for you all to study from. The name of the book is the Pharmacy Technician Certification, or excuse me, Pharmacy Technician Exam Review. I'm holding it here. And when you ask me where can you order it from, you can order it from my Amazon store. I'm going to drop the link in the video description. You go right there. The book is already listed. You click that link. It takes you right to the book. You add it to your cart. You pay for it. You're done with for the day, okay? People are getting confused with what book to order. So I wanted to make it very simple and very easy for you all. So that way you can find this book. You can find the information as quickly as you need to. And you don't have to worry about, you know, ordering the wrong book or anything like that. Um, I will click the, I will put the link in the video description. You can click it, order it, and we'll go from there. Okay, friend. Thank you so much for showing up for you today. I am so proud of the work you, the progress you've made and the work you put in. Please continue to trust in yourself because if you don't, who will? If you don't make it work, who gonna do it for you? Nobody. Please don't sell yourself a dream thinking that if you keep hoping and praying and asking that it's going to be done. No, you have to hope, pray, and ask and do the work, okay? One plus one is two, okay? It's not one plus one is five. One plus one is two, so you have to do your part, okay, friend? Keep showing up for yourself. Keep doing your very best. I will see you again next Sunday, same place, same time. Take care. Bye.